Ya beloved Muslims, assalamu alaikum. Audhu billahi min shaitan rajeem, bismillah man rahim. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa akduhu la shurika lahu. Ashadu an muhammadun abdu rasulu, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. All praise is for Allah, the cherisher, sustainer, Lord of all the worlds. The praise is for Allah, we praise him and we seek his assistance. And we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge with Allah from the mischief of our souls and from the sins of our own deeds. Whom Allah has guided, there is none to misguide. Whom Allah leaves to stray, there is none to guide. And we witness that Muhammad is his servant and last prophet. The peace and blessings of Allah be upon him his family, his companions, and the whole Muslim community. I mean, we love Muslims as always. It's a blessing indeed to be here, to be alive for another blessed Juma. We thank Allah for the strength to come to be here. We pray Allah that we benefit from the service that we have and that we give to him in community. We have selected a topic today, the title of which is healing as one of the mercies of Allah. And the surah that we have selected to highlight is al Hadid. The verse 28. O ye that believe, fear Allah, and believe in his messenger, and he will bestow on you a double portion of his mercy. He will provide for you a light by which you shall walk straight in your path, and he will forgive you your past, for Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. The way that and Allah speaks the truth. The way that we want to approach this khutbah is we want to first give the solution, and then we'll give the problem. And finally, we will end with the solution solving the problem that we presented. So let's let us begin. Almighty God Allah says in Quran Al Anam 12, to Allah, He has inscribed for Himself the rule of mercy. We experience Allah's mercy in the kindness that we get from others, caring. For example, a nurse who nurses one back to health are just some examples of the mercies of Allah. And very much an example of the mercies of Allah is the process of healing. You know, and all of us have experienced injuries, illnesses. We may have mental illness or spiritual illness but healing is a solution for all of those. In life, it's not surprising that all parts of us just going through life can become damaged, injured, traumatized, infected, or gone astray. Allah says in his Quran in Yunus 57, O mankind, there are some has come to you a direction from your Lord and a healing for the diseases in your hearts and those who believe a guidance and a mercy. You see, the body's healing process often begins with our body first recognizing that there's a problem exists. Then the body goes ahead and musters our body's resources against that problem. 
That's an important way that the problems are dealt with. A mother's love in nursing one from weakness to strength, like her infant, is one of the must mercies of Allah. Al Araf 58 in Quran. For the mercy of Allah is always near to those who do good. Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. You know, when we watch animals, we can see that one species of animals may come to the aid of a distressed animal of another species. This is one of the mercies of Allah. This process exists by the design of Allah. And it's to our benefit to trust Allah's process. Sometimes we may not realize that wounds are actually doorways. Sometimes a wound can open up another level of progress for us. A wound in and of itself has a lot to teach us. A wound can be something as small as a paper cut, insignificant, but a paper cut can become infected. A wound can look small on the surface, but it can be undermined and very deep, but not visible to the surface. Some wounds are invisible. Some wounds are in the mind. Post-traumatic stress disorder, a wound in the mind. The individual may not have been shot in the war, but the wounds are deep in the mind. And then there's the wounds that can occur to a people. You've heard it said post-traumatic slavery disorder. Wounds that we have deep in us, almost to our genes. Wounds take time to heal. Wounds can be reopened once we thought they were healed. Wounds, healing takes patience. And after healing, there's recovery and rehab. All of this is important in all of the wounds, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. Very important. Almighty God Allah is the ultimate healer. He is the one who does the healing such that nothing is left after he heals. And also, Almighty God Allah may use others in his healing process. He may use the one who is knowledgeable of herbs and medicine, of herbs and spices and treatments that go back in history. He may use that one. He may use the one who is knowledgeable of medicines, knowledgeable of evidence-based medicine and the uh, allopathic medical model. He may use that one. It's up to Allah what he uses. He may use a child and his innocence to heal the wounds that are deep in the psyche. He may use whatever in his creation he so chooses to bring about the healing that he desires. And Allah knew that his creatures also needed healing. Dogs, cats, birds, animals. They break a leg, they get infected, they get confused, they crash into windows. Yes, they have to be healed too. And he knew that at times, even the animals had to fight for their lives. They had to fight one another for supremacy. They got injured, they get illnesses, infections. They have competitors among their own species and they have predators who see them as meals. 
So for us, it's we should never despair of the mercies of Allah. Allah can forgive us a mountain of sins. Forgiveness is also one of the mercies of Allah. As believers, we ask ourselves, with such a merciful God who cares for us and his creation in the ways that we just explained, how do we explain what we see in the world today? How do we explain the confusion, the strife, the upsetting of the earth, changing of the climate, increased polarization. How do we explain all of this as believers with that merciful God that we just explained? This is important. This is important. Because whether we said it out loud or not, at some point ourselves, we had to say, why did Allah do this? Why was that earthquake in Haiti? Why did Afghanistan fall? Why did all those people get killed in that explosion? Why did all of these things happen? How do I explain that as a believer? How do I explain the insurrection? How do I explain how things seem to be going downhill rather than getting better? Those are good questions. Good questions that we should be answering, ask and pondering. Before dealing with that, we would like to bring a principle, an important principle. Another one that we have for medicine. It's called triage. Triage is crucial. Triage is a process of separating the critical cases from the minor cases. And why is this so important? Because if you don't separate them correctly, some critically ill people will die quietly on your watch while you urgently giving your attention to some minor care cases. That same thing can happen spiritually. Okay, think of what we're saying. The world can be going to hell in a handbag but the provider might be addressing minor issues. Not that they're unimportant, but minor in the critical time, such as smile is a charity. True, indeed, but we have people dying. <laughs> we have people that we are losing. We have souls that are going downhill. It's not a critical treatment, spiritual treatment at this time. You see, all sins are not equal. There are major sins and there are minor sins. There are major spiritual disorders of survival seriousness. And there are minor spiritual disorders. It's important for us to look at the root cause of our current crisis. You may be surprised at how simple it is. The loss of God consciousness Takwa, and the loss of the fear of God in the society. 
how do you say how how how, how does that how does that pan out? It means that we have lost our moral compass along with our ability to distinguish right from wrong. That's major. What happens when you lose your moral conscience and cannot make that distinction is we substitute it for what is legal or what's illegal. I'll be governed by what's legal or what's illegal. And then we reduce that further to say if, well, if I can get away with it and not get caught, it's okay. You see what just happened to society? Losing that moral consciousness in that little bit deteriorated just like that. And you open the door for every ill and wrong that can occur. What happens further is that once that loss of taqwa occurs in the society, there's a less commitment to anything else, right? There's less commitment to principles, to ideologies, to laws, to contracts, to vows, to one's word. Once that gone, that major foundation is gone, the taqwa, the God consciousness, then everything else deteriorates. You're less committed to democracy. You're less committed to your vows. You're less committed to your word. You're less committed to the contracts you signed. See what happened in society? Something else happens. There's increased general acceptance of lies. Before, you wouldn't tolerate a lie when the moral consciousness was present. But you began to accept the lie, the ultimate being the big lie. Okay? Injustice, ah, okay, I can tolerate that. Prejudice, okay, I'm a little prejudiced. I go along with that. Crime begins to creep in. What else begins to grow? Blatant selfishness begins to grow. I'm gonna get mine. I'm gonna get, I don't care if nobody else gets there, I'm gonna get mine. That's what people begin to say. And there begins to grow a disregard for the greater public good and what we witness for the public health. I don't wanna wear a mask. I don't care if anybody else gets, I don't want the mask on my face. No regard for the greater public good or the public health. That's what creeps in too. What we see is a continuous downward cascade in the effects that grow in society. The institutions themselves become unfair. The institutions become exploiters and they get fleeced by the powerful people in society. The institutions of the society start to erode and lose their moorings. And finally they collapse. We're talking about education, healthcare, politics, law enforcement, government. That's right. All going back to that loss of taqwa and fearing of God. Human relations get strained. They become polarized and tribal. Men against women, that's right. Are you a feminist? Uh, are you into me too? Do uh, you want a family or not? You don't need one, <laughs> okay? Ethnic groups, one against another. Communities and nations, alliances begin to break down. Think over this, businesses become exploitative corrupt and greedy. You can used to pay so much for so much goods and now they quietly reduce the amount of product you get 
but the price remains the same. Corruption slips in. To say nothing of the extreme abuse of the Earth's natural resources, climate change, and we see the extremes in temperature, more intense storms, droughts, fires, floods, and the rising sea level. All of this can go back to that. Think over this. It's an important point that we're coming to. Almighty God Allah says in, in Surah Al Isra 102, Moses said, peace be upon the prophet, thou knowest well that these things have been sent down by none but the Lord of the heavens and the earth as eye opening evidence. That's what prophet Moses said, Musa. He said that to uh, Pharaoh, and I consider thee indeed, O Pharaoh, to be one doomed to destruction. Indeed, there have been similar perilous times to this in history, but no time quite like now. Each moment in history faces its own many crises. Almighty God, Allah promises that. Allah will test us so that we can see what is inside of us that we could not see. You see, Allah is not in discovery mode. <laughs> he doesn't test us to see what the outcome is, what we're going to do if we go this way or that way. He knew us before he created us. He knows us deeper than anyone or anything that we can imagine. He tests us so we can see ourselves. So we can get exposed what's in us to us. So we can deal with that. How many God Allah says in uh, Surah Akaba, repentance. See they not that they are tried every year once or twice, yet return not in repentance, and they take no heed. Allah is telling us, he tests us, he tests us, so that we can see, so that we can repent. But sometimes we go through that test and say, whoo, I dodged the bullet. I got out of that one. I'm good to go. Oh, what did you learn from that? What did we learn? So many things indicate that we're facing a closing window in time. Climate change, the pandemic, the insurrection, etc. How many generations before them, Allah says in Sad 3, did we destroy? And in the end, they cried for mercy when there was no longer time for being saved. Unfortunately, that reminds me of the reports that we get from some of the patients suffering with COVID. May Allah ease their suffering and pain and that of their families. Those who did not believe that COVID exists, they thought it was fake news and they resisted putting on face masks. And ultimately they contracted COVID and were hospitalized in the intensive care unit. And right before they were being intubated, they would ask the provider, I'm willing to take the shot now. I'm will Give me the shot. I didn't believe it before, but I'll take it now. That's what Allah is saying here. Okay. When there was no longer time for being saved, it's too late, the shot doesn't work at, like that. We are now in the time to listen to the evidence for COVID. And we are now in the time to look at those things that are occurring before our eyes. Abdullah. America is undergoing her tests right now. 
She's at a turning point and is staring into the abyss. In some regard, she has sold her soul to retain power and white supremacy. The racial reckoning has begun. It's already begun. Everything isn't climactic. Some things begin slowly and build up. Those are the ones you have to be aware of. You have to be aware of what is the trajectory of what we're seeing. Don't wait till it comes down. Don't wait as Allah says, you see the angels coming down. <laughs> you don't do that, that's too late. Or wanting to take the, 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 the vaccine when you're being, being intubated, it's too late. America is in danger of turning off the light that America showed to the rest of the world. That shining city of light that's promised on the Statue of Liberty. That light is in danger of being turned off. You know, COVID came and acted like a can opener <laughs> that exposed the putrid, deep inner contents inside a can that had gone bad. Throughout American history, America has always been in deep inner conflict over the status of her enslaved African peoples. And that goes way back beyond America's beginning. It goes back to the time that the statement, I am better than he, or we are better than they. Back to the original statement of Iblis to Allah, his creator in the garden. And what followed from that statement is that since I am better than he, I can take from him. I can rob, I can abuse, I can exploit, I can subjugate, I can own, I can deny. I am the same color of God. Think over this. In fact, just look at what I've done and accomplished. Okay. They wrestled with the question, are the Africans property or human beings with rights? Hmm. That was fought. The Confederates fought a civil war over that question. But now America is facing her most feared event. And that was revealed in the just released census report. Just released census report. America is afraid, some Americans, not all America, is afraid of the loss of white power by losing its majority to people of color. I don't know if you got the memo, but that was earth shaking. Many people were shaken to their very foundation. They suspected it, they knew it, they tracked the data, but now it was made openly public. And what they fear is that everything is at stake. Some are witness, some are willing to sacrifice everything, religious principles, the soul of America, to reverse that. They feel that they are, they are in danger of being treated like white supremacy has treated everyone else over the centuries. Don't put on me what I put on y'all. Don't do that. <laughs> I will fight like mad to not let that happen. That's what's being said in the psyche. Nobody says that openly. 
They're quite content with letting, leaving us in the dark. But here, we have the important point that we wanted to make. And this is a key point. Let us pray. Our Lord, we have indeed believed. Forgive us then our sins and save us from the agony of the fire. For the second part of the kutbah. And this is the important takeaway to recognize that the culprit is not white people but Satan. Okay? I know we build a case. But don't take that to the conclusion that it appeared that we were heading toward. The important thing is the culprit is Satan. Because when you keep that in mind, that's where the healing can take place. If this is not understood, buckets of the wrong medicine can be poured on all of these problems. And it will not impact the condition of the patient or the world. Not the condition of white America, black America, or peoples of color. If that point isn't understood, all the activities, all of the legislation, all of everything can be poured on that. And it won't change. In fact, Satan will smile. He says that that becomes part of Satan's defense plan. <laughs> you are contributing to his defense plan. That's what he hides under. That's right. Let him pour that on me. Pour that on me. Give it to me this way. Give it to me that way. He pulling a rope-a-dope on everyone. Satan uses all of the color, all colors of people for his purposes. He makes victims of all people at the same time or at different times. So what we're saying, dear believers, is that the root cause of these problems is spiritual. It is spiritual. Remember how it began at the beginning and showed the cascade downward? All of the problems began with a spiritual disorder. The correction is also spiritual. See, these spiritual problems is the voice of Satan working inside the psyche of man. And this solution Healing requires faith solutions. This is what Imam W.D. Muhammad did with us. You say, what? Yes. He taught us Al-Islam. He taught us Al-Islam. And he further showed us its application to our unique problems as African-Americans. The Al-Islam that he taught could have been to any peoples in the world. And you had to apply that Al-Islam to their problems, which may or may not have been similar to ours. You see, 
We'll go further on that point. Look at how Almighty God Allah revealed the Quran to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, over 23 years. The revelation for the most part came at times to give guidance and direction. That's right. He had, he revealed the Quran at once on his heart, but it didn't come to his mind at all, except over 23 years at different situations that occurred with him, okay? It was the application of the Quran at the time. That's crucial. There's a book, it's called The Reasons for Revelation of the Quran. And I disagree with the title. <laughs> the reasons for revelation is with Allah. I would say the circumstances of the revelation or the situations at the time of revelation would perhaps be better. So what is not being sent or appreciated is a call to God to repent and correct. These tests and trials are coming to America to push it in this direction. If she has any inclination to go there, the society is doomed as those in the past were when there is no one else likely to turn the truth. Almighty God Allah says in al Kaf 59, such were the populations we destroyed when they committed iniquities, but we fixed an appointed time for their destruction. And Allah speaks the truth. Keep in mind, that popular movements, culture, government, social media represent methods through which the calling of Satan can occur to individuals. Beware of that. But in each case, the individual makes the decision for himself. An individual can be swept away in the current of events but he remains the gatekeeper of what he allows into his own heart. And Allah will not change the condition of a people until they first change what is in their heart. As we come to a close, Almighty God Allah says in Hud, Surah Hud 90, but ask for forgiveness of your Lord and turn unto him in repentance. For my Lord is indeed full of mercy and loving kindness. With each of us individually, acknowledgement of our sins and pray for repentance, correct the wrongs. Inshallah, this could save America. That's how the movement is started, a positive movement for good. This justice could bring about peace, heal the world, and correct the damage that has been done to the planet. Keep in mind that Allah says, again, in Ashura, the poets, 208, never did we dest destroy a population but had its warners. Alhamdulillah. With that, bring our talk to a close. We pray Allah that we have said something of benefit we said anything in error, we ask Allah's forgiveness. We ask your forgiveness. And we ask that please reflect on the day and time that we live in. Allahu Akbar. Akima Salat, that is called the Akama.